Hey folks, welcome to another Sonic character profile video. This one was rather inevitable. After talking about Honey the Cat, being the Dynamite and Fang the Sniper, I felt compelled to round off the Sonic the Fighters crew and talk about Bark the Polar Bear. In this video, we're going to talk about everything related to Bark, starting with his early conception and scrapped design, all of his video game appearances, and his portrayal in other forms of Sonic media. Before we get going, I want to extend my thanks to a few people. ZM256 for sending me some of this info, Vertikins for translating some Japanese materials used in the video, and Biggest Sonic Fan for clarifying a few things and sending over some screenshots too. Big thanks to all three. Now, without further ado, let's go back in time to the mid-90s and talk about Bark the Polar Bear. Bark made his debut in the 1996 game Sonic the Fighters, also known as Sonic Championship, a fighting game starring a cast of Sonic characters. Bark was, in a sense, the only totally original character to appear in the game. All of the game's other fighters were kind of pre-established. Of course, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles and Amy had appeared in games before. Espio the Chameleon had debuted a year prior in Knuckles Chaotix and Fang the Sniper had already starred in quite a few games at this point too. Bean the Dynamite, although also a new character, was basically a recolor of an older Sega character from a game called Dynamite Ducks. And of course, in the arcade release of the game, Honey the Cat was not a playable character, but even Honey was based on a human character from a game called Fighting Vipers. Bark was the most original character in the lineup, and was the only character to really go through a number of design changes in the lead-up to the game's release. From an interview with Hiroshi Kataoka, head of Sega AM2, conducted in a 1996 issue of Japanese Sega Saturn magazine, we can glean some really interesting details of Bark's evolution as a character. When asked about Sonic the Fighter's two original characters, Bean and Bark, Kataoka said this, the first one is not a woodpecker, but a creature called a dynamite duck, Bean. His speciality is bomb attacks, so I wonder if that'll be nostalgic for old Sega fans. The other one is a power type, and the idea was an orangutan, but for the time being we've gone with Bark, a polar bear who lives in Russia. So the original plan for an orangutan character didn't work out for whatever reason. Instead we got a Russian polar bear. Which is interesting because I don't believe Bark's Russian background is ever made light of anywhere else. Even when the team landed on the idea of a polar bear, Bark went through some serious changes in the months before the game hit arcades in mid-96. A build of Sonic the Fighters was playable at an event called the AOU Show 1996 in Japan. The build on display is assumed to have been 50% complete. In various photos taken at this event, you can see that Bark underwent some pretty dramatic changes between the AOU event and the game's final release. Early Bark had a different hairstyle, no scarf, and appears to be much more white than he would end up looking, which does make sense considering he's meant to be a polar bear. Some screenshots were also uncovered this summer in a magazine titled The Ultimate Guide to Fighting Games. In these additional screenshots, Bark looks a little more yellow, and his character selection screen icon is visible. Although the paler fur on early Bark does make more sense, I think his final design with a more dramatic hairstyle and a green scarf add more attitude and a much needed splash of colour to the character. So, Bark officially debuted when Sonic the Fighters released in Japanese arcades in May 1996. Being a big fella, Bark's fighting style is slow, but incredibly hard-hitting. Unlike Fang and Bean, Bark doesn't utilize any weapons in his moveset, preferring to pound opponents with his huge fists. He has a few grab attacks and a spinning fist attack too. Hmm, a Russian fighter with plenty of grappling and spin moves. I can't help but feel Bark was based on another fighting game character. Anyway, Sonic the Fighters has a pretty simple story. Dr. Robotnik has built a new space station, the Death Egg 2, and Tails has built a rocket to get one solitary combatant to the Death Egg. It requires the power of the eight, yes, eight, Chaos Emeralds to get there. The Sonic gang fight amongst themselves in an effort to gather all of the Chaos Emeralds, 
one of which has been entrusted to each of Sonic's buddies, to determine who should travel to space and take Robotnik on. Bark's background and his reason for being a designated Chaos Emerald Protector is never explained in-game. At this stage in time, he may well be a good guy, or he might be a mercenary like Fang who stole his emerald, or living in a remote frozen wasteland, he may have just happened upon the emerald he guards. Bark's stage is Aurora Icefield, a cold and atmospheric stage surrounded by ice walls with, in my estimation, the game's catchiest song. Here's a random fact about Aurora Icefield. Pengo, a penguin based on an older Sega franchise, was originally going to appear in the background of the stage but was cut from the final game. Before we move on, one question arises. Why is Bark yellow if he's a polar bear? I've never seen a yellow polar bear before and I don't think this question has ever had a real answer. But look closely and you'll notice Bark is a polar bear, not a polar bear. It's obviously a typo, or is it? I'm going to choose to believe Bark is a type of yellow bear unique to Sonic's world. Hang on, I've just googled that. Polar bears do come in a variety of colours, including shades of yellow, so I guess it is just a typo. Bark's second appearance was in another Sega fighting game called Fighting Vipers. Fighting Vipers hit Japanese arcades before Sonic the Fighters in 95, but it was released on the Sega Saturn in 96. The Saturn version of the game featured additional cutscenes and that's where we can spot Bark. There's a small section of the game's intro cutscene where you can see a few Sonic related things, including two plush versions of Honey the Cat in both her original and her alternate colours. Amongst all these other bits and bobs is Bark the Polar Bear. I'm guessing this is a big plush or a big statuette of the guy. Bark also appears with the whole gang in a still image in the ending for Tokyo, one of the game's characters. Here's Bark's third appearance as a playable character in the Sega Saturn fighting game Fighters Mega Mix, which brings together characters from Virtua Fighter, Fighting Vipers, Sonic the Fighters, and a whole bunch of other Sega games. Bark is ridiculously huge in Fighters Mega Mix, towering over all of the other human competitors, which is weird to see. He also has a cool Santa Claus outfit as his alternate Player 2 costume. The Fighters Mega Mix official guide offers us some really interesting additional information about Bark. Reading his profile, we learn that he is North Island's number one snowboarder. He is blunt and quiet, but has a gentle and loving heart. He's actually a shy guy. This is interesting because North Island is, to my knowledge, never again mentioned in any other Sonic game. I guess Bark's Russian heritage was dropped in favour of him being from this mysterious island. Or I guess he could be a Russian expat, who knows. An unofficial guide was also released, authored by the folks behind the Famitsu Gaming magazine in Japan. This is unofficial of course, but it was unearthed and photographed by a Sonic Stadium forum user called The Masterboard. The guide included some one-page comic strips, adding some flavour to the game's characters. Here's Bean's strip, for example, experimenting in his bomb laboratory. Bark's strip shows him sweating in a log cabin, ordering a bunch of fridges from a company called Yamada Electric, and realising the cabin only has one plug socket. I really wish this were official, so I could say this is the first time a Sonic character cursed. Shit! It doesn't end there. Fighters Mega Mix also had an official manga adaption too, which features Bean and Bark on the front cover. I've not been able to find scans of this volume anywhere, so who knows what sort of hijinks the duo got up to inside. In 2018, game designer Shiro Meyakawa tweeted something very interesting. A list of teams that were originally planned to appear in Sonic Heroes during the early design phases of the game. Bark is on the list, teamed up with Bean and Fang. This is quite interesting because it seems to be the start of the Team Hooligan concept, which has seen Bark, Bean and Fang become more closely connected in recent years. I always considered Fang more of an independent character, not needing a team, and never really considered Bark and Bean as villainous characters, 
But this plan, although scrapped, seems to be the genesis of these ideas. What do you think of Bark as a baddie teaming up with Fang? Does it work? Does it make sense? Anyway, now let's talk about Sonic Gems Collection, a compilation of classic games released for the GameCube and PS2 in 2005. The collection includes Sonic the Fighters, marking the first time the majority of Sonic fans will have had the chance to play this relatively obscure Sonic game. The game's museum mode features a remix of Bark's Sonic the Fighters stage music titled Fairy of AIF, which of course stands for Aurora Icefield. The song has lyrics, and although I can make out a few phrases, I couldn't find the written lyrics to the whole song. I wonder if there's any explicit references to Bark in the song that I'm missing out on. Apparently, Fairy of AIF also plays in convenience stores in Yakuza 4 too. I'm sure you've heard already, but Bark, Bean and Fang did appear on Wanted posters in City Escape in 2011's Sonic Generations, which was a nice little touch and a little sign that Sega hadn't completely forgotten about the trio. This was the moment that cemented them as villainous characters in the game universe, although they had been villains in the Archie comic books for quite a while at this point in time. We'll get to that soon. There's one final game to cover, and I'm sure you know what it is. The Wanted posters reappeared in the Wild West-themed Mirage Saloon Zone in Sonic Mania from 2017. Not only that, but Bark, Bean and Fang appeared at the end of Act 2 as the zone's boss. Bean and Fang use bombs and a cork gun to attack Sonic, while Bark pounds the ground with his fists, causing debris to fall. Of course, the Mirage Saloon name is a giveaway, these aren't actually Bark, Bean and Fang, but just illusions cast by the zone's real boss, the Heavy Magician. Nevertheless, it's still really cool. Now let's take a look at Bark in the Archie comic books. For starters, and I'll say this right away, I think Bark's Archie design is far inferior to his game design. I don't know what it is, maybe the small muzzle or the barrel chest, but he reminds me of Knuckles' design in Sonic Boom, and that's not a good thing. Bark was also drawn with red eyes in later comics, giving him a villainous look that didn't match his character. In terms of his personality and skill set, Bark is one of the three strongest beings in the world of Archie Sonic. Pretty impressive. Bark is a mercenary, traveling the land with his longtime partner Bean, and offering his strength and services to the highest bidder even if the highest bidder is Dr. Robotnik himself. As a duo, Bark and Bean are reminiscent of Jay and Silent Bob, because Bark never, as far as I know, said anything in the Archie comics. He was totally mute, while Bean, on the other hand, was a chatterbox. Despite his silent nature, Bark was still pretty expressive, easily communicating with Bean and others thanks to his facial expressions. Bark made his debut alongside Bean in issue number 160 from March 2006, which happens to be the first issue penned by Ian Flynn, one of the comic's most well-known writers. Maybe it's Flynn who ultimately is responsible for turning Bark and Bean into explicit bad guys. I guess I don't have a huge problem with that because there's an awful lot of good guys in Sonic's team already. Bean and Bark spend the majority of their time working alongside Fang as part of Team Hooligan, usually working for members of Sonic's rogues gallery like Robotnik or Mammoth Mogul, usually chasing the Chaos Emeralds or the Sol Emeralds. Bark has, at times, expressed some concerns about the allegiance of Team Hooligan, a concern that's not shared by Bean or Fang, and a concern that's often squashed by Fang. For example, on one particular assignment, Team Hooligan are after the Chaos Emeralds for Robotnik, and do battle with Knuckles and the Chaotix, who intend to restore the world to normal after a catastrophic crisis. Bark feels quite bad, because the Chaotix want to use the Emeralds for a good cause. There's some depth and complexity to his character that's always been underexplored. Superior to Archie's Bark, in my opinion, are the fleeting glimpses of Bark we've seen so far in the IDW comic book series that started in 2017 and took over the Sonic mantle after Archie stopped making Sonic comics. Bark made his debut as part of Team Hooligan in the Sonic 30th Anniversary comic. 
In that comic, Bark is one of Fang's lackeys, who in turn is on an assignment from Dr. Robotnik to grab all the Chaos Emeralds. Bark is kind of disinterested and somewhat pacifist when Team Hooligan confront Sonic and Co. Bark only really shows any emotion after he's been assaulted, at which point his anger prompts him to show his own strength. Team Hooligan eventually join forces with Sonic's team, and Bark shows his true colours, bonding with Amy and offering her his scarf in the freezing cold, though he gets awfully embarrassed when Amy thanks him for his kindness. Bark really is a gentle giant deep down, and this little relationship he has with Amy is great. I think IDW have perfectly captured the essence of Bark's character, and really done him justice. His design's great too. The artists have perfectly captured Bark's original in-game design and he looks great. For what it's worth, an unnamed orangutan also appeared in the IDW comic books too. An interesting look at how Bark might have ended up looking like if they didn't change him to be a polar bear. And that just about wraps up the story of Bark the Polar Bear. I often bemoan the fact that Sega seemingly forgets about its older characters, but that's not entirely fair. Team Hooligan and even Honey have appeared in art posted on Twitter by the Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter account. It's nice to see them get some recognition. Let me know in the comments what you think about Bark the Polar Bear. How's he been portrayed best? In the games, in Archie, or in IDW? And that is Team Hooligan done and dusted. If you have a character you'd like me to talk about in the future, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and thanks again to any folks who helped me research this one. Hopefully, I'll see you next time.